follow me on a journey where no one has ever been before. Listen to the Cali Effect. Good evening, YouTube. You guys are now watching another segment of the Cali Effect. Today, for the middle of October, I thought we should take a break from being so creepy. Yes, the Cali Effect is not that creepy. I'm going to be teaching you guys, well, it should be how to play machines, but I'm just going to call it how to play Gear Gear. Now, the biggest reason why I'm saying how to play Gear Gear and not how to play machine is because, no, I'm not going to teach you how to play Karakiri. No, I'm not going to teach you how to play Makina. No, I'm not going to teach you how to play Gadget. I'm going to teach you how to play Gear Gear. And then I'm going to tell you that all of these decks are very, very usable. And to the back, and that's basically what we're going to be doing for this week. The most important part is that we know that how these Gear Gear monsters work. So if we ever wanted to go a solo Gear Gear type deck, we know exactly what we're doing. So let's start off with the little guys, actually. Gear Gear M, or actually, I'm sorry, Gear Giano. Gear Giano is a little guy. He's a level 3 Gear Gear, and you can tribute him to select one level 4 Gear Gear from your graveyard and special summon it to the side of the field. Its effects are negated. So that's basically about him. He is a level 3 little guy, and he does introduce the Gear Gear series to us. Next, we have Gear Giano MK2. Now, MK2 selects one Gear Gear monster from our graveyard or our hand and special summons it to our side of the field, and its effect is not negated. So great, we have a step forward. Now, the last Gear Gear little guy would be Gear Gear MK3. MK3 is one is special summoned by the effect of a Gear Gear card. You can select and special summon one Gear Gear monster from your hand or graveyard to your side of the field, but its effect is then again negated. This makes no sense. The great thing about it is that, I mean, you get the special summon, I, I don't, I mean, what it's special summon, but you can't go into anything other than machines, which is also another depressing. But it's perfectly fine. We'll figure out something else to do with that little Gear Gear thing we got going on. We'll go on to the bigger guys, which are really what pushes the Gear Gear deck forward. The best one out of the little guys that I was talking about is MK2. It allows you for a lot of good recovery when you're going into your plays. It allows you to special some of your big guys back to the field, and it doesn't negate the amount of effect. So we don't have to go balls deep in to make a play um, with Gear Gear MK2. Now to the normal Gear Gear monsters that we essentially play, and if you guys pay close attention, the little guys are actually inside of the bigger Gear Gear monsters. We're going to start off with Gear Gear Armor, the best card in the Gear Gear deck. When Gear Gear Armor is flipped face up, keep in mind, when it is flipped face up, you can add one Gear Gear monster from your deck to the hand. That's going to be very useful seeing that it is the Gear Gear deck's best card, it is your straddles of the deck, and the best thing about Gear Gear Armor is that you can flip Gear Gear Armor back face down yourself. Another great thing is if the opponent attacks into your Gear Gear Armor and their monster's attack is lower, you flip your Gear Gear Armor face up, you add a Gear Gear Monster, then on your turn, you activate it to up, flip it back face down, then flip it back face up for your manual flips of it, and then add another Gear Gear Monster, gear gear monster from your next to your hand. Very punishing for the opponent, more often than not, will give you a lot of advantage to work with. Next on the Gear Gear list is Gear Gear Arsenal. One would say, how would you be able to get this $1,900 out so easily? Because Gear Gear's just received support, but they were good before then. Gear Gear Arsenal is a big reason why armor got to the field so fast. By tributing Gear Gear Arsenal, you get the special summon one Gear Gear monster from your deck to the side of the field. Also, when Gear Gear Arsenal is face up on the field, it gains 200 attack for every Gear Gear monster you control. This card is the essential key piece to bringing Gear Gear Armor to the field. Now, what would be like, okay, Cali Effect, Armor adds the little guys and Armor adds Arsenal, but I don't see any pop in this deck. Well, here comes your pop. Here we have Gear Gear Car. Okay, I said it wrong. His name is actually the. Why can't I remember his name? His name is actually Gear Gear Accelerator. Now, when you control a Gear Gear monster from your side of the field, you can special summon Gear Gear Accelerator to your side of the field. This gives the deck the necessary push that it needs to go into instant plays without requiring your normal summon. Hmm, you attacked my armor? Yo, I'll add a Gear Gear Accelerator, then I'll flip my armor back face down, or flip it back face up, and then add another Accelerator. Special to summon my two Accelerators? I can do just about anything I want. But wait, there's more. When Gear Gear Armor, or when Gear Gear Accelerator is destroyed, by a card effect and sent to the graveyard, you get to select one Gear Gear monster from your graveyard and add it to your hand. Now that is a lot of pop with a lot of insurance on top of that. Accelerator ensures that even if your combos are hit, 
by cards like Torrental Tribute that you at least get something back for extending. That's what really makes Gear Gear a really good deck. No, it's not the 20 back row that you can run. It's, it's the actual monsters. Okay, it's not the monsters. The last two Gear Gear cards are actually new to the Gear Gear archetype. We're going to be talking about Gear Gear Augur, one of the most awkward Yu-Gi-Oh cards in Gear Gear existence. Granted, there's only 11 Gear Gear cards, but I thought he'd be the most awkward. Now, at 500 attack and 500 defense, you're like, what the fuck? And then its effect only adds level 4 Earth Machines for your deck to your hand when normal summon, so you're like, I already have armor to do that. But there's a lot of things that we're missing with Gear Gear Augur. When, like I said before, when Gear Gear Augur is normal summon, you need to add one level 4 or lower machine type monster from your deck to your hand. You cannot special summon any other monsters except for machine monsters, and you must, you cannot declare an attack. So it's like, the fuck, Cali? Why, why do we even have restrictions like that, Cali? That's just dumb. Why would we do that? But there's a great reason. His 500 attack that we're glaring at makes him a prime candidate for cards like Machine Duplication. And let's not talk about how Gear Gears work so well with other machine type cards. We'll get into that just a little bit later after I finish explaining the other Gear Gear cards. The last Gear Gear monster that we get to talk about is Gear Gear Attacker. Now, Gear Gear Attacker is a very awkward Gear Gear monster. It kind of has effects similar to armor. You know, you can flip it back face up and flip it back face down, whatever you want to. And when it is flipped face up, you can destroy a spell and trap cards up to the number of Gear Gear card monsters you control. Now, one would think, okay, that's decent. But it's very odd at being 100 defense, or very little defense if it's not 100, and 1900 attack. One could use it to bluff Gear Gear Armor, but then I just feel like there are better choices you could have used. It's not a bad card, but mm, it's decent at very best right now. The last Gear Gear card that could be used in your main deck is Gear Gear Gear. Now when Gear 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 is activated, you get to select two level 3 Gear Gear, Gear, Gear monsters from your deck and special summon them to your side of the field. Their levels become 4. Now if this card was not limited, there are so many plays we can be talking about. Gear Gear could be like tier 0 right now, but unfortunately it is limited to 1. It's a really good trap card that allows us to get off our rank 4 plays while actually even playing rank 3 monsters. If Gear Gear, Gear was still at 3 and we got MK3 at the same time, there would be combos, but unfortunately it's not, so I'm not even going to delve into them. Next for the XE monsters is Gear Gagging X. Now, Gear Gagging X is basically M Cold 40 in uh, XE form. Once per turn, you can detach one material from this card to add one level 4 or lower machine monster from your deck to your hand. If Gear, Gear, Gear Gagging X is ever sent to the graveyard, you can target one Gear Gear monster or one level 3 Gear Gear monster and special summon it. The last Gear Gear XE card, or the last Gear Gear card that I can even talk about, is Gear 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 Gigant XG. I don't know why it has such a freaking long name, but sure. Gear 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 Gigant XG requires three level three machine type monsters, and when a machine type monster is battling, you can detach one material from this card. The effects of all cards, face up cards your opponent controls are negated, and they can't activate cards to the end of damage step. If Gear 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 Gigant XG, God, can somebody say that 10 times fast? is sent to the graveyard, you can select one Gear Gear card in your graveyard and add it to your hand. Now these Gear Gears seem really, really good on their own, but did I forget to mention that they're amazing with machines? You know, just taking by example, Gear Gear Augur just selects, adds one level 4 Earth Machine type monster to your deck. It's like Konomi begging you to mix it with other machine type cards. For example, we can mix it with a Kari Kiri engine. There's the Spashi. No, it's not the Spashi. Is it a splashy? What am I pointing up right now? There's that card that when it is summoned, it's changed. You can you have to select the monster and change its battle position, but it's a level three tuner. It allows us to go into cards like Beret. Beret gets us to special summon him, or allows us to special summon Sizen, which is a level four tuner, which allows us to go into Borrego. Borrego, when card battle positions of card creep monsters are changed, you get to draw cards. And also special summons more card creep monsters to your side of the field. So let's not get into that. Or the two card combo that's very viable now with Birdman, you know. Doesn't this card even like sound good? You flip up Gear Gear Armor. Gear Gear Armor acts Accelerator. You special summon Accelerator. You bounce back the Accelerator, special summon Birdman. Then you special summon Accelerator again. 
From there, you go right into Pareto. Pareto gets you sizing. Sizing is just too much. Why, Konomi? Why did you make these cards so workable with card carry? It's like, please play card carry. Not to mention that they are level seven. Uh, the singles that I do spew out are level seven. So I could play Makina in it. You know, Fortress to help me make Draco sacks and big eyes. You know, since I can't make Draco sack extremely easy, since I can single or the sevens so well, Redox is a great card for the deck, since they're all level earth for the exception of Birdman. It's like asking for this monster mash like earth deck of machines to be played. And that's exactly what we're going to do in the Cali Effect. I'm excited to play this deck with you guys, but until then, you guys are going to have to wait until I get to the shop and just be like, how do these cards work? Oh, one more thing. There's a 10 card combo that I'm not going to explain. I'm going to show you guys in the video. But it does require revolve Gear the Armor and Machine Duplication. If you guys would like to post down below what the combo is, feel free. But until then, thank you guys for watching another segment of the Cali Effect. Please like, comment, subscribe, but most of all, enjoy.